What is going on guys? Andy Gabs coming back at you with part two of the giant cage build. Like I said, I left you guys on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Last time I showed you the shelves that I had built that are right there, but now I need to start foaming. Um, again, I wanted to break this up into two pieces, possibly even three, just depending on how long this takes, just so the video is not super long, because I know a lot of you might watch the whole video, but a good portion of you will not. So if I break it up, I feel like you guys might watch a little bit more, which is good for me, uh, given how much money I've spent on this build. The, uh, the views will be nice. A little bit of ad revenue that I get will, uh, will help out a little bit at least. So uh, smash like button, comment, do all those things already. Right now, while you're watching, just click that pause button real quick and uh, comment. But for now, let's get into foaming. All right, so like I said, we are going to start by foaming. I'm gonna start with this back wall here. Um, I am going to foam today and then within the next couple days I'll be doing the spray rubber over that so if I'm not foaming the bottom like eight inches That's because that's where the substrate's gonna be. So if you're curious that would be why uh, for now I've got three cans of the great stuff gaps and cracks filler in here, and that is what I'm gonna be using to foam Let's get started. So this stuff is pretty great. You just screw on this little thing right there Don't forget to pop that forward. So I'm not sure if you guys can see it so that little green, you can see it's green right now, and then if you pop that down, it's red. If you don't pop it out uh, to green, it'll just get like stuff, and then it'll explode. You don't want that to happen. So just give it a nice shake, and then we will start at about eight inches. Now I'm really hoping I don't have to take these off the stand and lay them down. I'm hoping the foam will stick enough so I can just do it vertically, because um, if I have to take it down, that's just gonna be a major pain in the butt, uh, and it'll take me substantially longer, because this, this piece that I'm in right now probably weighs 400 pounds, and that piece probably weighs about 200. So they're very difficult to move. I also added wheels to the bottom. Uh, I think I mentioned that in the last video, but should be shaken up enough. Take the phone out of my pocket. And here we go, let's see if it sticks. So it looks like it's working. I'll bring you guys back once I get the rest of this wall foamed. Just a little update for you guys. Unfortunately, I had to do what I said I didn't want to do and lay it down. Uh, the foam was kind of falling off. When I was putting it on, it was just dropping down to the bottom. This foam is not cheap, so I want to lose as little of it as possible. Um, so now I'm just gonna continue foaming out the background with it laying on its side. You can already see kind of what I've got done. But now I'm gonna continue to foam it out while it's laying down. It'll just make it a little easier. It'll harden better, I think. So I got side one done. Uh, I'm gonna let this sit for probably 15, 20 minutes just so it gets a little bit of hardness to it. And then I'll do the left side, I guess. So I've got this side pretty much done. You guys can kind of see what it's gonna look like. Again, this stuff can be trimmed. It'll eventually be covered with silicone and then had dirt applied to it. And then I think I'm gonna do this side and then I might start on this one as well. Uh, basically just depends on how much foam I have. That took me a total of one, two, three, four, five, like five or six cans just to do this. And I think I bought 12 total, so I have six left, so I probably can only do like one more side, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I like how it's looking so far. Still a lot more to do though. Uh, and like I said, still not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with the ramps, but coming along good. I'm still happy. Just finished up cage one, or the dry side, not really cage one, they're the same cage, but the uh, dry side of the cage, you got the, all the sides done. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna have to go in and add a little bit more to like the tops and stuff like that and fill in all the little areas that didn't get any foam. But for the most part, I'm happy with how it looks. So you guys can see there's foam all the way down on all of the bottoms, the front right there. There was a hole in the little walkway right there, so I filled that up. Uh, there's also some foam back underneath there. And then all the way pretty much up to all the top corners. Like I'll have to go in and fill in like those little cracks a little bit. And then that part in the front, I didn't do that. Or that part right there. Tomorrow I'll have to go in with more foam and do that. I hope you guys are enjoying part two so far. Definitely still a lot more work to go, but I'm, I'm definitely happy with how it's coming so far. All right guys, so another day has passed. The foam has all dried as you guys can see. Nice and dried. I went through and trimmed off like where there was excess pieces or it stuck out too far. Or, I mean too far in my opinion. Uh, I went through and trimmed some of that down and to do that, I'll give you guys a little how to. Super easy. I just use an old um, buttered bread knife, bread knife from the kitchen. And then you just find a piece like, for example, say that piece right there, how it sticks out a little bit. Super easy. Just go through and do that and then you're left with like a, it's a little bit more porous 
than what this is, but that's all gonna be covered in silicone anyway, so it doesn't really matter. As you can see, all of the trimmings from the foam are all over the garage. Now, I'm going to go through with this stuff. This is Flex Seal, the same stuff that I used in the snake cage build. By the way, if you guys haven't seen that, go look a few videos back. I just stepped on a screw or a piece of wood, ow. I built an awesome snake cage. Nowhere near as awesome as this one, uh, but it's still pretty cool. Now, go through and flex seal the whole bottom of this cage where it's not foamed, and uh, that's where all the dirt's gonna be. So this is just gonna help with a little bit of that waterproofing and protection for the wood. So with this stuff, um, well, the top fell off. All right, so with this stuff, you wanna shake it up a lot, and basically this is just rubber. It's liquid rubber in a can. Always start in the back of wherever you're painting this on and do like one light layer first and then you can go back and do another layer. And basically you just take this You get a nice light layer on, and uh, you pretty much just keep doing that. So that's what I'm about to do. If you guys were curious how much one can of this, uh, like surface area, of how much surface area it covers, um, out of anything that I use, this is the most expensive stuff. It's about $14 for one of these cans. Uh, well worth it in my opinion, but if you were curious how much one can covers, pretty much that. So I know it's very black, so it's kind of hard to see, but all this back area where those posts are, up to right there. So this can, I have two of them, should get me done with the first coat on this. I'll probably need about six more cans of this to finish. So you guys can do the math there. That is almost 100 bucks in just Flex Seal. So if you wanna build one of your own cages, you guys have to be prepared for how much it's gonna cost. And again, guys, I am probably not even halfway done, and I've probably spent over 500 bucks so far. Both of those cans are now empty. It looks like I am gonna need probably a total of two, probably like four more cans, maybe six more cans to get it done. You guys can see, pretty decent layer on everything except for that one spot right there, which is killing my OCD because I ran out before I could finish up that spot. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how that worked out. Now, uh, you might be wondering why none of the ramps are foamed or anything like that, and that's because I was thinking about doing foam on those, but then I was like, well, you know, with Asian Water Monitor's claws getting so long, I think constantly him climbing up and down these ramps, uh, I think his claws will start to shred up that foam and that'll turn into little pieces. I don't really want that. So what I'm gonna do is I have uh, 10 or 12 things of silicone rubber over there. I'm going to paint on some silicone onto this and then uh, cover it in dirt. Um, I can't do that right now just because I need to wait a little bit for this black stuff to dry. While that liquid rubber is drying, what I'm doing in the cage for the water feature is adding in support beams. And the reason I'm doing this, this is roughly four feet by three feet by two feet tall. Uh, so it's roughly gonna be like 180 gallons of water and that's gonna weigh over a thousand pounds. So instead of just having it how this side is, how the water would be right against that, and this is gonna have a pond liner in it. I'm adding two by four braces onto the sides, and then I'm gonna cover this with another piece of plywood and then put the pond liner on that so that that water won't be pushing directly on this, which you can see bows a little bit. It'll be pushing on these, which are like rock solid. So I've gotta add two more there, three there, and three on this line. Unfortunately, I don't have enough wood to do that all tonight. Um, I have enough to do like half of it, I think. So I'm hoping that my neighbor Carson right there who's been helping me and letting me use his tools and whatnot will have a piece of uh, two by four that I can use to build the other braces. But for now, gotta cut a few more and then just screw them all in. So it's getting kind of late, so I don't wanna continue to make noise. So that's what I got done for the little two by four support so far. I got the three on that side, that's all I need. One on this side, one on that side. So I still need a total of one, two, three, four, seven more, so I will need one more two by four and my neighbor just came out, he doesn't have any. That kind of sucks, that's just I need to order another one and have it delivered, but no big deal. Um, now what we're doing is we're taking that brown silicone and putting it on here, and I didn't need to do it right here because this is gonna be slate uh, for the basking spot, but I'd already done it before Kelsey said, hey, do you need to do that? So now we're gonna do that to these pillars right here, the back side of that, this ramp and that ramp, and then these two by fours down here. And ideally that's just gonna make it look more naturalistic. It'll make it look like it's kind of like trees instead of just wood. Uh, so yeah, that's our project for the, for the time being. And just like that, this is pretty much gonna be our stopping point for the night. So we got that ramp, which I didn't need to do because that's where the tiles are gonna be, but whatever. That ramp, this one, that one and then both of those posts. That's not bad progression for the night. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, doing all this foam is going to take forever. I mean, you can see what my hands look like right now. 
pretty rough, but I'm pretty happy with where we're at right now. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. I'll bring you back tomorrow. Another beautiful day in paradise. So, give you guys a little update. I've started working on the background, but I'm doing it in a new way, and it's a way that I've not done before, so I wanted to show you guys. It'll end up looking like that, but what I do is I take this stuff, it's brown flex seal instead of that black flex seal that I was using, but I think black would work too and I actually have some black that I'm gonna try it with. Basically, what I'm doing, uh, before I spray, this is just topsoil mixed with some sphagnum moss. I just mix it all up together, and that's basically just to give it like some more texture and a little bit of a different color just so it's not all brown. As you can see, the little flakes and stuff in there. Then we take the flex seal, just spray it on, make sure you get all the little gaps and cracks. I try to put like a decently heavy coat on there too. So we'll just do an area like that. And then what I'm doing is taking a handful of this and just throwing it at it like that. And there you go, just like that, you have yourself a naturalistic background. Uh, so I obviously have a ton more to do, and I will probably do some sections that are siliconed, uh, like I used to do it as well. That just takes a really long time, which is why I wanted to try to find something else to do, and uh, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Obviously we'll see once it dries if it's actually like strong enough to hold it on there, but I'm pretty sure it will be um, for now. Lots more cage to do. Another cool thing you guys can do when you're making your naturalistic backgrounds like this is use different things. Like you guys saw me mixing the sphagnum moss in with the uh, with the dirt and stuff to get like that textured look. But you can also use completely different substrates. Like I have Brian Barchek's Reptile Prime. Uh, shout out Brian. This stuff is great. It's a very light color. It's kind of chippy. So when you put it on, you can see there's a. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because the lighting. Oh, there you go. You can see it's much, much lighter than that color. So it just kind of makes it look a little different. Then you can blend it in like how that's blended in right there. But uh, so far it's coming along pretty good. Gotta get all this done, which I don't know if I have enough flex seal to do it, but I'm gonna try. And then um, gotta start foaming out this cage and finishing that one too. So I've got the dry cage completely foamed, completely dirted out. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I am gonna have to go through and like patch a couple little spots and then I'm gonna go through and add in some like different colors and different textures and stuff. But for now, this is what it looks like. So I mean obviously I need to clean it out so there's still like random scraps of dirt everywhere. Then like places like that where you can see it's very brown or very reddish brown. Uh, I'm gonna spread that out a little bit so it doesn't look as noticeable but you can see, got pretty much everything done. All down under there, there, all up here. I'm not gonna do that just cause no one's gonna see it and it's never really gonna matter, but so far I'm happy with how it is looking. And now is the part that I've been kinda like nervous slash dreading is working on the water feature. So I showed you guys last night I believe, I was building in these supports. So I've got three there, three there, three on that side, and three right here. So now I'm cutting up the plywood that's gonna go right there, right there, there, there. And that plywood basically just acts as supports for the pond liner, which I have right there. I bought two of them just in case. I don't know, I'm gonna stack them right on top of each other. I don't know if that's smart or a good idea. It might not be, but who cares? Uh, it'll work. And then eventually there'll be filtration and everything. And then I think I'm even gonna fill like the gaps with some foam, uh, the expanding foam, just for some more rigidity. Um, it's probably not necessary, but it'll make me feel better. But for now, that's what I'm working on. Just like that, after, I don't know, I've been in here for pretty much all day now, but probably like two hours worth of work, give or take, the box for the pond is done. There you go, that's pretty much it. So there's three of those support beams on every side, two support beams on the bottom, and another piece of plywood on the bottom, so weight will be nice and evenly, evenly distributed. So now I've gotta go in silicone all of those edges just for some added waterproofing protection. Then I'm gonna flex seal all of that, and then I'm gonna add the two pond liners. Probably not gonna add the pond liners till tomorrow just to give the silicone and all that stuff some time to dry, but tonight I am also going to start foaming this to make it look 
like that. I'm not sure what I left off with yesterday, but I know I made a decent amount of progress. Other than what I showed you I already made, also my face is extremely dirty. I've been doing backgrounds. But this one is essentially done. I even got the screen up on the top. So it's two layers. There's one layer inside supported by foam and then one layer on top. Those are all staple gunned in and then the same thing on this one. So one layer inside the cage, one layer outside of the cage. And then as you guys can see, I also got not all, but most of the background done on this one. And now I'm about to seal that with the flex seal and then I will be adding in the pond liner at some point today and then hopefully I will be putting them on the stand and sealing them together today and that's when I think you guys will really be able to see like whoa it looks like a cage but for now I've got to seal that get the pond liners in add four more casters of those wheels to the stand just for some more weight support uh, and I think that's probably gonna be it for today also if you notice something different about me comment down below all right y'all so my hair is looking crazy I know that I don't remember where I left off with you guys I know I was gonna do the pond liner and I was doing the foam and I did a whole bunch of stuff and I didn't film just because I was trying to just get it done. But on that note, I'm gonna turn you around and show you where we're at. Boom. So it's not sealed together yet. It's still like separated. These are just the two pieces sitting together, but foamed, foamed, and the pond liner is in. All of the edges are siliconed. siliconed. It's not actually cut right there. There's just a fold and I figured just to be extra safe, I would uh, put some silicone in all of the edges. Again, doesn't look pretty. I had to cut all this foam off here too to be able to staple that in up at the top. Once I verify that it is watertight, then I will go ahead, cut this foam right here. I mean, cut this liner with a razor blade and then put foam back over this to kind of secure it in place. But I won't lie to you guys, right now is like one of the moments that I have been dreading since building this, and that is water testing the pond to see if it is good. What I'm about to go do is grab my hose and start filling this up. Guys, I really, really hope we don't have any leaks. Like, I would be legitimately sad if we had leaks. We're gonna fill this bad Larry up. So far, so good, no leaks. Uh, I've been looking at the bottom, as you probably saw me in the time lapse a few times. I only have it filled up right there, but I think that's about gonna be the water level when it's actually, when the animal's actually in there. Um, maybe a little bit higher, but this will just give me a good idea if there's any leaks anywhere I'm gonna leave this overnight and hopefully I don't come in tomorrow morning and see puddles Also just to test it out. I think I'm gonna hook this guy up. This is a fluval 407 canister filter Eventually, it's gonna be ran through like over here and up there for a waterfall or something like that uh, For now, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp it on just to get it running to see if you know Make sure everything is working and the filter is plugged in and running I did almost choke to death by sucking the water through to get it going but as you can see, that is the intake. We have water flowing through. So that is a positive. Again, I'm just gonna leave this here all night, essentially. Uh, I'm probably not gonna have the filter run all night just cause it's kind of wasting power and I don't need it. That light was bright. Uh, I don't really need it running cause all this water is gonna be drained at some point anyways. But for now, I'm just gonna let it sit. I will bring you guys back in the morning. Pray to God we do not have any damn leaks. I am happy to report that we are at about 24 hours and the floor of the garage is still dry. No leaks anywhere, so now I'm about to take this water, drain it, dry it, so I can go ahead and silicone and foam all of the edges. So it took some engineering, but that's the intake. Ran to the pump, there's the outtake. Ran to my vacuum post, ran to a gutter drain, and it goes right into the gutter out there. Now eventually I will have some sort of PVC rigging to make this substantially easier so I can just hook up a PVC pipe and run it straight out there. But for now, this works. It's probably gonna take about an hour for it to get all the water out. Haven't filmed in probably a week or so, mainly because I needed to get a whole bunch of stuff done and I just I couldn't film at all because I have deadlines that I'm trying to hit. And I wanted to be able to bring you guys back and show you like a huge update and not just me doing the same stuff, the foam and stuff like that. I think the last thing that I filmed was the pond. Um, so still no leaks. My filter did actually have a little tiny crack in it, but I brought it back to the store and they just gave me a new um, little like housing thing. So that's good. But I want to show you guys everything that I've gotten done so far. I think we're going to finish it, finish like the building stage today. So as you guys can see, it is now in one piece. I joined the two pieces together 
sealed it, siliconed it, foamed it. I will say one thing on camera, it looks like very patchy. Like the background looks patchy. It doesn't look as patchy like that in real life. I'm not sure why it looks like that on camera. I have a whole crap ton of cypress mulch right over there to fill it up and we're actually about to do that right now. Um, got, so the pond is all in right now. I just have a fan sitting here um, to dry out. I sprayed a whole bunch of Flex Seal inside of it, um, mainly just to make it a little bit more watertight. And then on all of the edges, it was like brown and white silicone. I sprayed Flex Seal over that. Also got a waterfall feature in. So water's gonna come out right here, drip down, down to there, and then in. But I still have to do the plumbing for that on this side with that, cut up that PVC right there. And then I have some little elbows somewhere over there. It's definitely still a lot more to do, but I think I can get it all done today. Oh, doors, right, didn't show you guys doors. Need to sand them down a little bit more, but I got these doors on for now. It's just screen, and that's because the summer times here get very hot. I think it'll make my life a little easier regulating temperature, having this completely open. But I've got locks on the bottom and on the top for both of these doors. There's also gonna be an actual key locking lock in the middle. Um, this door is not on right now just because I had to re-foam these edges. So I need to trim all of that foam uh, and then get the other door on, which is over there. Also got a couple more pieces of cork bark that I can make some decorations with. Uh, but for now, I'm about to get all of this mulch into the cage and uh, I will probably be releasing these guys. So this is powder orange, powder blue, and zebra isopods. Um, got a whole bunch of those, so I'm gonna release them into the substrate. I'll throw some fish food or something in there so they can eat until the monitor starts pooping and stuff in there. But we're definitely making progress, guys. All right, so I got all the substrate in. I had the perfect amount. Um, I was nervous that I bought too much, but if you look at it, it is almost exactly to the line. So that's about two feet deep. Um, I, I mean, it's not perfectly straight. There's some little spots where it's a little bit lower, a little bit taller. Once the animal gets in there, it's gonna move that shit around anyways, so I'm not super concerned. I also just cut my toe. I'm sorry, when I was crawling out of the enclosure, it caught the little lip and uh, ripped my pinky toe up, and it hurts right now, which is why I keep looking at it. Now, isopods, so I'm gonna let all of them go, and they are gonna start doing their job. I'm gonna have to feed them for a little bit um, until the monitor gets in there and starts pooping, but let's let them go. Go. They're all already starting to crawl around and before you know it There'll probably be a couple hundred of those guys in here and they will be eating all the decaying crap I definitely recommend whenever you have like a big cage and an animal that poops a lot because it eats a lot You have a cleanup crew. Um, they just do a great job helping you keep your enclosure cleaner as you guys can probably hear, waterfall is running. I do have a slight issue. I'm gonna have to add some silicone at the back of where the hose comes in, because right now it's kind of falling behind the cork bark and coming out of the foam, which is not good. So I'll show you guys real quick, then I gotta turn this off, add that silicone, uh, let that harden overnight, and then tomorrow I'll be able to leave it running. But there it is, looking pretty great, doing almost what I wanted to do. I had to add that little piece right there just to stop some water from going back. But if you look closely, there's some water coming out right, right, right there, out of the foam. Um, and that's because some water's just dripping through in the back. But I'm gonna go ahead and silicone that up now. The fact that now it's painted, so it's it looks black in video, I think, but it's like a kind of like a dark gray, like a graphite-ish color. So we got everything painted but the sand. We'll probably paint the sand eventually. But I believe the last thing that I told you guys is that I was gonna come back uh, once I got the waterfall on and all that stuff. So the waterfall is on and working great. As you can see, it's right there running perfectly fine. I added a couple more pieces just to prevent some splashing over here. Also got an LED light strip in the top, two mercury vapor bulbs over there, and some slate for basking. Uh, the basking spot's currently sitting about 110, 120 degrees. I want to get it up to about 130, so I got to figure something out just to get it a little warmer. I might do one mercury vapor bulb and then do one like 200 watt uh, ceramic heat emitter, something like that. But something cool that I want to show you guys in progress that I made. I added in some white gravel to the pond, and as you can see, there's actually some fish already in there, a few of them. But I've got about 20 or 30 little comet goldfish in here two bigger comet goldfish in there, and a self-cloning crawfish in here. Now, the goldfish are more for like feeders than they are 
just to have, you know, fish in the pond. It'll be fun for the monitor to go in there, chase them around, and try to catch them. So I'm gonna have Kelsey film for me real quick. These guys have been soaking. I went and got the water tested. Our water is good. I did have some high nitrates, nitrites, ammonia, just kidding. My ammonia was high. So I got some ammonia remover. Shout out 50 Fathoms Reptile Shop in uh, Louisiana. They're great. Um, Mike there has helped me out with all kinds of stuff. Anything I need, they hook me up. But I'm gonna have Kelsey film real quick so we can let these fishies go. So Kelsey's busy doing something, so I've got you guys set up on my little tripod. I know I'm probably super close to the camera right now. But uh, let's go ahead and release some fish. Decent amount of them in there. They're all just goldfish, just different colors. Super cheap, they're like uh, 30 cents a piece or something like that. So they've been floating, so I'm gonna do, do that. Slide them all right in. Boom, so that's one bag. That's all the little guys. Here is the two bigger guys. One of them's kind of like a calico color and then one of them's got like a cool off-center spot on his head. Uh, that's why he picked these two. Kelsey picked the calico looking one. But let's go ahead and get these guys out. And out they go. These two big guys are in. Now for the one I'm most excited about. And that is this guy, the little crawfish. Dump him right out. So that gives you guys kind of an idea, I'm standing up on a ladder right now, of what it looks like, full of bunch of different goldfish. Um, just got that one little plant in the center just so they have something and they're not swimming in a big open thing. The crayfish is right there all the way in the corner. Uh, I'm gonna have to put some like egg crate or some uh, milk cartons in here, milk crates rather, um, just so they feel secure. The two bigger goldfish are right there in the back. You know, obviously there's not tons of hiding places in there right now, so I'll, I'll add some stuff in there, um, and I'll show you guys as I do it. But uh, for now, I think that is it for this video. I mean, I can give you guys one more kind of walkthrough, show you how I did the power too. So we have a power outlet right there. I ran power across through there and onto the top. It goes across the top and then to right here. So if I want to turn anything on and off, all I gotta do, press that light switch that kills the power, turn back on. Those won't turn on right away just because they're hot and they wait to cool down before they turn back on. But I mean, that's what the pond looks like with just the pond light. I think it looks pretty cool. That thing was nice and cheap too. It was only like 30 bucks on Amazon. It's got white and blue LEDs. Three different types of isopods. There's powder oranges, powder blues, and zebras in here. Um, odds that I'd be able to find one if I dug around are pretty slim, so I'm not gonna try. And like I said, basking spot has a bunch of slate up there. Again, it's not quite as hot as I want it. I want it to be a little bit hotter, but luckily I don't have the monitor yet. I should be going to get it this week, assuming everything works out with the fish um, and all of the water levels stay good. I wanna let this cycle for at least a few days, if not a week. Then I might be adding some cooler fish in there too. I was also thinking about even possibly adding like a little turtle, like a little readier slider or something like that with a little basking area, but I'm not 100% sure yet. That would be in the future because I'd have to build a little basking stand uh, and I'm kind of overbuilding for now. But I do hope you guys enjoyed the part two of this video. In part three, I mean not a build part three, but just this cage part three, we will be going to pick up the animal and probably pick up a couple more cool fish too. So stay tuned for that. Do me a favor guys, like this video if you did like it, subscribe if you're new here, turn the notification bell on so you get notified every time I post. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.